Welcome to Radio Cop Podcast. I'm your host, Al Martinez, also known as Alpha Mike. This is episode 315. The episode's name, Going Forward. What are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about the Secret Service and how they protect dignitaries. Seems to be outdated. There's been a lot of mistakes, but we're trying to avoid those mistakes in the future because if you don't train if you don't do thinking out of the box you will stand to look stupid that more on today's episode we got a lot to cover but if you're looking for gun training in the tampa bay area i know where to go RaiderCopTac.com. That's RaiderCopTac.com. There you can get training on revolver, semi automatic, shotgun, carbine, rifle, whatever curriculum you're looking for. We live in times that are very dangerous and you can't get enough training today. Just because you shoot at a silhouette that doesn't shoot back or move doesn't make you very proficient. So we recommend RaiderCopTacTAC.com in the Tampa Bay area. And if you want to hear our podcast, all of them from number one to number 315, that's a lot of listening to RaiderCop podcasts, you can go to RaiderCop.com. RaiderCop.com. Our number, 813-942-7400. And how do you get in contact us to write those nasty little emails? Well, it's easy. Cop Podcast, all one word, lowercase, at Proton, P-R-O-T-O-N dot me, M-E. And we'll get back to you. Today's episode is number 315, and we're going to talk about going forward. You know, when you acknowledge that there's been mistakes, that's a part of growing up. It takes time. It takes resources. It takes self-preservation. It takes self-analysis. You just can't. Turn on the switch. Turn off the switch. You've got to really examine what we did wrong and how to create, fix it, and create something new. And I don't think the Secret Service is ready to do either one. But we got more information for you as we spin along on some of our uh, views here. You know, recently, Camilla, and she's been screaming and carrying on for 39 days, Chamala, as we call it here, you know, Che Guevara, Imala, as in bad in Spanish. Chamala, for 39 days, has made it a point not to interview with the media. But you see, it wasn't originally an interview. The challenge was that she has failed to do a press conference. But of course, the weak conservatives didn't push the issue. They kept on saying, well, she doesn't talk to the media. So scripted, it was a barn fire. She sucked. She showed weakness. She didn't, wasn't sure of herself. She obviously is not a public speaker. And now she's gaslighting America by saying, I've never changed all my, my uh, opinions. Never. That's the kind of look you have to do when you hear somebody that bullshits you. So Chamilla with her babysitter, Tampon Timmy, they uh, went to the scripted show, and she did not fare well. I know, of course, to the Democratic era, 
Tea was one of the best things in sliced bread. But for those that care, care deeply about their nation and their country, she didn't add up, man. She can't spell, she can't sell what she's going to do. She can't sell it. You know, like um, the character in Meyer Lansky in The Godfather. I think it was Godfather 2. And he was in a Havana hotel. And he tells Michael, they just couldn't sell it. He couldn't sell it. If you can't sell it, you can't do it. It's that easy. So we're going to examine how the Secret Service can go forward on this episode. But let's talk a little bit more about uh, the Trump rally. Originally, another crazy came out, tried to get on the stage or climb a fence or something at some rally venue, and he was tackled by police and I believe tasered. I didn't see the taser, but they said it was tasered and um, kind of manhandled off the stage. The kooks are coming. Why? They're being summoned by the lack of attention and of authority demonstrated by the Secret Service in what happened with Trump. It's a joke. And so now you have the copycats that are going to be coming fast and furious. So we live in dangerous times. We discussed that, and that's why you should have some type of self-protection training. You should have a plan in case something goes wrong. You should have cash on hand. You should know what you and your family have to do if you're off the grid. You know, it's not, you, you can't Google this when the shit goes down. You've got to have a plan now while you can. Hopefully, we never have to use it. A failure to implement one is a problem. All right, looking over at my notes here, 9-11, it's coming up soon. We're in the month of September. And 9-11, our show on 9-11 is uh, 316, and we're going to talk about do they remember? How many people say, we'll never forget, never forget, never forget? And for a lot of patriots and for a lot of New Yorkers and people in the other areas that were attacked on 9-11, they will never forget it. A lot of people served in the military during that time because they had a sense of honor. But 24 years, 25 years later, is America still feeling the same? Or is this new generation out to lunch like they usually are? I don't know what to tell you because it's confusing. But what happened that day, I remember vividly, and I, like millions of Americans, were disgusted by what occurred. We felt that our country could have done better. But when we knew that we were ready to fight against those aggressors that attacked us on 9-11, we all cheered behind our government. Are those days gone? We'll take a deep dive on that, and that's going to be on our next podcast. But I just wanted to touch the surface just a little bit. All right. A little bit about uh, the new thing that we're going to be doing on this show. We're going to be looking at some cop news. And, you know, we are Radar Cop Podcast, and a lot of people have been uh, mentioning, uh, hey, you're not doing anything uh, related to uh, cops. Well, we do. Uh, we just don't do a lot of it. We have a lot to talk about, not enough time to talk about it. But in police news, one security guard was killed recently and stabbed in the face. 
and uh, was confronted in a Philadelphia Macy's security guard was killed. He was stabbed, and another one was stabbed in the face, I believe, or also stabbed, as they confronted one of the burglars in a Macy's. This is what happens nowadays. Another story in police news, Pittsburgh PD honors uh, an attack that was going to happen on a school. And uh, li little information was shared upon that by, uh, by the media. And that's a shame. So Pittsburgh Police Department, um, there was a threat in some school. And they acted and hopefully and most definitely prevented a lot of kids from getting shot. Okay, when I jumped, for those that are watching me on video, that's the script and it fell off the mantle. So we had to put it back up. But all is saved. Today's episode is number 315, Going Forward. You know, in my uh, former law enforcement agency, the code for 315 means officer needs assistance. And we all need assistance and looking hard at what happened in the Trump rally. And could we prevent that from happening again? I think we can. I really do. But it takes initiative and I don't know if the government has what it takes to make those changes. Because you see, you have to admit there was something wrong. And that's one of their problems. All right, let's pull out our Bibles. As we always do, we look at the Word of God. This one is short but very powerful. And it's for you to concentrate on the Word. You know, opening up scripture and just reading it, it sounds like Babel. But what, are you, man? what is this? I mean, I'm not getting it. See, scripture was not written for everybody. People, every, anybody can read it, but not everybody will understand it. Because there's an interpretation of it from the Holy Spirit to the Spirit. And if you don't have it, you don't have it. But it's easy to obtain. Understanding that there is a Lord and Savior and accepting that Lord and Savior in Jesus Christ, admitting your sins, and you can go forward and you can receive wisdom, as the scripture says. So we turn to the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1, and it says, real, real easy, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. That's it. The Word is God. So that's how powerful Scripture is. Yeah, there's a lot to unfold there and explain for the non-believer. But think about what I just read. In the beginning was the Word. Before anything came, anything existed, the Word existed. And the Word was with God together. And the Word was God. So, I encourage you to continue looking forward and looking towards Scripture gives you that solid foundation and you're not stepping on stand. Our episode today is number 315. I'm your host, Alpha Mike, and we're looking at going forward. How the Secret Service has to start protecting and get their head out of the sand. It's time on the podcast to get the short bus because you're about to hear the main event. I'll see you there. You're listening to episode 315 going forward as we discuss what the Secret Service should do in the future to protect 
its executive petition detail, which is also known as the President of the United States, the Vice President, and any other designee that they're told to protect. You know, we live in these very dangerous times, but sometimes you wonder if our government has caught up to these dangerous times. Do they think out of the box? Or are they stuck inside the box? Recently, our Social Security numbers were hacked in the tolls of millions and millions of Americans to the point that everybody's now basically being told you can expect some type of incident or fraud as a result of that hacking that occurred. Third party, they didn't hack the Social Security Administration. No, they hacked some third party that the Social Security Administration thought was fine to send them all these Social Security numbers with information such as addresses, phone numbers, uh, you know, all, all that pertinent information. So that's a problem. But the government continues to masquerade with this little card with those numbers on it and telling people, you need that. The system, when it first came out, and this show is not about Social Security, might have been revolutionary, but in, 24, in 2024, it's asinine. While the Secret Service may be right there with the, secret, with the Social Security Administration. You see, we've got a lot of questions we're going to ask, try to answer, and come up with a plan going forward. Did the plan come from me? No, it didn't. It came from experts, people that know their stuff, and they want, their, they want our government to get their thumbs out of you know where. So, what do we know now? Let's dive in that. We know that our government does not move very fast as we discussed with the Social Security Administration. We also know that there's a lot of red tape in everything government does. Sometimes you could do a request for something and it could take years to show up if it even does. Ronald Reagan once said, people don't think that things are immortal. They simply have never seen a government program because when there is a program in the government, it lives forever. But does it change? Is there an evolution to that program? Most of the times it's not. Whether it works or doesn't work, it lives forever. And that's what's occurring with the Secret Service. So here's what we know right now. A 20-year-old kid outsmarted one of the greatest security details on the earth. The 20-year-old kid that the media constantly shows his sixth grade photograph because he didn't look like that. You know, you got to be mindful. Whenever you see that the media places a mass shooter and their photograph is like a fifth or sixth grade, they're trying to make the bad guy a good guy. He's a scumbag. He had long hair. And the photo that the media is showing you, he was in sixth or whatever grade he was in. He looks pathetic. And I'm not, I don't mention their names. I don't glorify the scumbag. You know who I'm talking about. But the media always is on the wrong side of the script. And on this, it's no different. He shot his round or rounds at President Trump from 140 yards. That's not very difficult, even as a new 
rifle shoot. Rifles are very accurate. Even without red dots and optics, iron sights. Once you shoot a couple of rounds, you start to focus in, you'll see how easy it is to shoot a rifle. 140 rounds isn't difficult. So we don't know the shooter's experience yet. Obviously, he was a part of a gun range that Homeland Security was using as well as Secret Service. Mind-boggling. There's Secret Service, there's Homeland Security agents using this gun range, and there's our future sh shooter. Although he didn't look like that sixth grade photograph the media is showing us. We also know there was no communication from the Secret Service with the local law enforcement. Or like they like to say, the locals. Make them smell, it sounds like the, the smellies. But when you look at these congressional hearings and you see the director of the Secret Service there, and he says he calls them the locals. Like the smellies. Well, the Secret Service was supposed to meet with the smellies or the locals prior to the event. The local police department interviewed with ABC News after the event, and they said Secret Service never showed up to that meeting. Strike one. Oh, well, there's a lot, a lot of strikes. We're not even going to do strike one, strike two, because we'll be up to, you know, the numbers are infinite here. So there's no communication with local law enforcement or no briefing. No Secret Service command post. Let me repeat that. No Secret Service command post. Now, there might have been a command post, but it was the locals, you know, the smellies. They had some type of command post, but not the Secret Service. Mind-boggling. Now, up to now, a lot of experts I've heard have said Secret Service usually always has a command post. Well, apparently, of course, I'll give you the federal uh, excuse that they use. We're still investigating, but at this time, we're not sure. Really? You couldn't just where 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 point to the effing command post. They didn't have one. That's why they can't. That's mind-boggling. So no command post. That's another strike. You you do the counting. I'm not, I'm not doing it. It's, it's too much. Um, no radio communication with the locals, you know, the smellies. So we know that the local police department was communicating via radio, but Secret Service, for some reason, was not picking up on it, especially the snipers. There was a break in that communication. You know what the break was? Secret Service didn't know what the cops were talking about because they weren't a part of the command post and couldn't hear the radios. And that wasn't their radios. So that's kind of hard, isn't it? Shit. We did a show on instant communication. It's mind-boggling. Press the button, talk, they hear it. It's, it's awesome. But Secret Service was not using any of those methods on that day. On the same day, Joe Biden's wife, Jill Biden, was on another Secret Service detail as she moved around, I believe it was Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Well, let's look how many people she had on her detail. She had 12 Secret Service agents. 12. That's one, two. Okay? Before 11 left, you, you, you get what I'm saying. I mean, after 11. You, you get it. Okay. Trump had four. 
three, four, get it? Four Secret Service agents. That's one third less than Joe Biden. Joe Biden had a maximum of 12. Why? She has no constitutional authority and she has all the resources that was sucked up out of the air on the Trump rally. Leo's, better known as the locals, could not locate the shooter. So there was people that were talking about, I saw a guy with a rangefinder. One of the police officers said they saw it also. But as we said in another podcast, apparently the shooter sprayed magical disappearing dust on himself, and the police could not see him or find him. But the witnesses could see him clearly and would point and say, look, there he is. But local law enforcement and Secret Service couldn't find him because the shooter probably had sprinkled magical disappearing dust on himself. The 20-year-old with the sixth grade photograph. The, let's see what we got else here. The shooter's flew a drone hours before the rally. Flew a drone hours before the rally. Should that location should have been secured by police early that day? Mind-boggling. The shooter got on the roof with supposedly a ladder. Imagine that. Everybody's at the rally and here comes this guy, excuse me, excuse me, with a ladder. He needed it to get on the roof. But again, as they say in federal government, investigation is still ongoing. What the hell is that over there in the corner? Is that a ladder? Mm -hmm. We find out the shooter had a range finder. Kind of measures the distance from where he is to where Donald Trump was. And the shooter zeroed him in in somewhere around 130, 140, 150 yards. Child's play for a rifle. There's where he was, the range finder. Officer did see him, a lot of witnesses saw him. They, hey, this isn't right. But the magical disappearing dust got the shooter out of there and nobody saw him. Disappeared. Only to get in position to cause havoc later. So we know that there's a lot of other things that we're not going to dwell into this all day. You know, the rest are... Why did he have three accounts in foreign countries, uh, email accounts and bank accounts and all this other stuff, blah, blah, blah. We don't know. We're kind of still stuck on the Kennedy assassination as well. Even 9-11 is a little bit of a mystery as well. So what do you expect here? But here's a question that needs to be asked. Why wasn't the area of the rally under security. Surveillance camera security. Days prior. Recently where I live, the Tampa Bay area, there's new construction of homes. And I guess some of the riffraff have decided to pick up items in the construction site. So the home builders have these neat little cameras that they're on tripods all over this area where they're building these homes and they have the construction equipment. You see little blue lights on these cameras and it's filming 24-7. Hmm. I saw it the other day and I said, what a shame. 
Secret Service could have had that in place days earlier. Why? 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 We do know that the Trump security detail had asked repeatedly in three and a half years for more resources and agents. Now they weren't denied like the Secret Services. They will say, on the day of the event, we did not deny anything. Listen carefully. On the day of the event, we did not deny anything. How about the day before? Well, if I ask you a question, direct question, I tell you, uh, did you do it? And you don't answer. You didn't say no. You didn't say anything. I'm going to take a deeper dive. I'm going to look at you with a different pair of eyes, and I'm going to go, mm -hmm. I smell something wrong. But not here. You see, the Trump detail requested 47 times enhancement of the detail. They were ignored. Nobody responded. So if nobody in the upper executive staff responded to the request, would you say it was approved? No, it was ignored. The next best thing has denied. The difference is, ignored is, you don't have the testicle fortitude to put your name and badge number next to the denial slip. So you ignore it. Like it never existed. 47 times, three and a half years. Oh, wait a minute. That's when Joe and Chamala took over. Trump didn't get anything. So why was it ignored? I mean, is this going to take longer than the Kennedy assassination to answer? Americans sure hope not. Since when is the Department of Homeland Security doing executive protection? We saw it with our own eyes. Secret Service Barbie. Couldn't holster, couldn't take a gun out. It was freaking awful. They had no tactical skill whatsoever. And... Why would you try to holster? Why would you take out your gun? They didn't look the part, and Americans were smart and wise, and they looked at it and they said, wait a minute, something's not right here. And we even now found out that a lot of these buffoons that were there were from Homeland Security. They were masquerading as Secret Service agents. This is our federal government, folks. But they didn't have that high-level training. You see, only four agents had that high-level training. The rest were masquerading as Secret Service agents and clowns. So, another important issue is, why did all the agents, when the shots rang out, all have semi-automatics, pistols. Well, took out that pistol. Mine's, well, mine's back there. You know, I've seen Secret Service details with the president. I think it was uh, William Jefferson Clinton. And the agents underneath their jackets had MP5, small little ARs. MP5s. These had pistols. Mind-boggling also. Where was the heavy artillery? Oh, we had sharpshooters. We had them up on the roof. Thank God. 
Because if we didn't, boy, would we be out of it. So here's what we need to do going forward, and it doesn't come from me. Recently, experts testified in front of a panel of Republican congressmen that are taking this back to Congress on what we can do better. And the people that were assigned to uh, giving testimony was Dan Bongino, that has his own podcast, and a former Secret Service agent. And Eric Prince used to be the CEO of Blackwater, which was um, an elite group of special, of special operators in Iraq and Afghanistan. They also did dignitary protection there in war. He had over 3,500 employees in very hostile areas, and the government paid him highly, billions of dollars. So he should be pretty knowledgeable in this area. So what they were recommending, and Eric Prince said so eloquently, the Secret Service was baffled by a 20-year-old kid. Imagine a terrorist team of 10, well-trained, heavily armed, moving towards the president. Can you imagine that shit show? Makes you think, right? We live in a different world. The days of bullshitting and masquerading with a suit and a tie saying stand back and a pair of aviators on is over. Today, you better know what you're doing. Because the enemy may come at you with everything they have to embarrass a nation and take out a leader. Iran has been threatening of late but we know they're cowards. They don't do nothing themselves. They send proxies. But Eric Prince now has everybody thinking what he just said. A 20-year-old baffled the Secret Service. How about an elite team trained, came through the border, heavily armed, moving in on our president? And I say ours, whoever's elected. Are they ready? Is the Secret Service that good? Not by the standards what we've seen lately. Eric Prince said there has to be a tactical special operations team that goes in prior. And basically what they do is they look at the layout that the Secret Service has, and then they hand them a sheet of paper and they tell them, this is 10 ways till Sunday that we can kill them. Make sure you get these areas covered. Do they have that? It's time to think out of the box. They also need a counter attack force. See, Secret Service, the way they operate is as soon as the shocks go down, tackle the president, jump on them, and get them out of the X, as they call it, the hot spot. They run away, they throw them in the limousine, and they're gone. That should be part of their strategy. But how about if you're pinned down? You have to have a counter attack force of whatever's attacking you. Maybe the sharpshooter can't shoot 10 people at the same time. They said there was two. You can only shoot one at a time. Let's say there was a force of 10. There's a whole lot of civilians that could have got killed in that rally. Tragically, one did die. One too many. So, with that information, that opens up our eyes. And we know that going forward, we have to have a highly elite force 
to protect the president. More so than the Reagan shooting, a crazy with a revolver. Today, we had a 20-year-old kid that outspawned the federal government and tried to take out the former president and hopefully the future president of the United States. And how about if it was an elite trained tactical force from a foreign actor, bad actor, that recently snuck in through the border, these 10. You know, they came in with phony IDs, Juan, Juan Jimenez, whatever name they use. And now they're going to the next event. Is the Secret Service prepared? Is local police prepared? No, some of these rallies are in small towns. They're not big cities. They have a lot of resources that the little towns don't have. There's some major cities in the United States that have more resources than states do. But not all these venues are in big town, in big cities. They're in small towns sometimes. So we have to look out of the box. We have to start recruiting these special operations guys as they leave, which they usually are very well recruited for the CIA. But maybe we should start recruiting them for something a little bit more boring, like a Secret Service detail. Because when it goes down, we have our best on the site, not our worst. Unfortunately, I don't think a lot of this is going to happen. I think the investigation to this will be swept under the rug. If 47 gets in, maybe there will be some noise. But we've been beat up so many times as Americans, we are used to never getting anything done, never having any justice, and never getting anybody found guilty of anything wrong. Only innocent people. You know, the small ones, the smellies. Up next... Episode 316 on September 11, Do They Remember? Do they remember? And when I say they, I'm not talking about the veterans, the firefighters from New York, the New York City cops that had people that died. I know they remember. I know there's firefighters all over America that remember. I know that there's military personnel and veterans that remember. And I know that there's cops in every area of this country that remember. And I know there's thousands of victims that remember their families that went down in those tragic attacks on September 11th. But do the politicians remember? Do the Democrats remember? Recently, the debacled withdrawal from Afghanistan, there was a ceremony to honor the 13 brave military personnel that died that day when they were doing that withdrawal from Afghanistan. And President Trump's, uh, President Biden said, no service member ever died under me. It was buffoon. Freaking buffoon. And they were there celebrating the life of their, and honoring the life of their sons and daughters. Proudly so. Some of those families invited Donald Trump to go there. He did. 
But where was Joe Biden? He was on the beach in Delaware. F them was the response. They didn't say it, but by his actions. Where was Chamilla? Chamala? Chamala? Where was she? She had nothing on her agenda that day. But we're kind of used to that three and a half years. She had nothing on her agenda. They didn't take the time to do it. See, I don't give three shits about the military. They don't give three shits about this country. If you're looking for a good gunsmith in South Florida, Pistol Pete, the gunsmith, he's down in Miami. His information is down in the show notes. Give Pete a call, even if you're not in the South Florida area. He'll tell you how easy it is to send your gun or your weapons to him legally. He'll fix them to your specifications and send it right back to you the same way. You'll be happier for it. So thank me. Pistol Pete, the gunsmith, down in Miami. And of course, if you're in the New Jersey area, carrying concealed weapons is a new thing in New Jersey. We congratulate them for coming into the fold of the Second Amendment. And our good friend Carlos Karras is out there training. And his information is down at the bottom of the show notes. It's Supervillia Inc. He can teach you uh, experience gun firearms instructor uh, for over 20 years. If you're in the South Florida area of AAA gun safety with uh, Amalo Abello, and uh, his information is down in the bottom of the show notes as well. And soon, we have a new one coming on from Central Florida. As always, continue to pray for yourself, because without you, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your community, the law enforcement agencies that serve you. And most importantly, continue to pray for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike. I'll see you downrange.